Okay, so this is a video on 3.1 number 78, uh, requested homework solution. Find the value of C such that the line is tangent to this curve. So the fact that we know the line y equals 3 halves x plus 6 is tangent to the curve means that the derivative for that curve must equal 3 halves at some point. Uh, the curve being, by the way, y equals some number times root x. So what we want to know is when is it uh, that this curve has a derivative equal to that 3 halves? So let's go ahead and find out. y prime itself, um, oh by the way I, I was going to do this kind of quickly, but y prime itself, I have to write this with a rational exponent, is equal to uh, c over 2x to the negative 1 half. And you want this to equal want y prime to equal 3 halves. So to do that, we'll go ahead and find out when that happens. So when you uh, do this, you get actually an interesting result. 3 halves is equal to c over 2 x to the negative 1 half. You could actually multiply both sides by 2 if you want. But once you get to that point where you multiply both sides by 2, you're kind of stuck. You have two things you don't know the x value and the value of c. So you're going to have to create another equation. There are two conditions here. This is a very common thing in mathematics where you have a couple of conditions. You don't know what c is. You don't know what x is. Um, and so what you're going to do is go ahead and create another equation here. To see how you're going to create that second equation, I'm going to go back up here to uh, the equation of line, which is uh, y equals 3 halves x uh, plus 6 and the equation of the curve, which is y equals c root x. Now, if you think about the equation y equals c root x, if I wanted to graph that, it would look kind of like, uh, well, not just kind of like, it would be a, a radical function. So it might look something like this. Let's just pretend. And then the line y equals 3 halves x plus 6, I am going to overly exaggerate this. So I'm not going to exactly draw this line, but I'll draw something close to it. I'll just say it looks like this. Okay. This is not exactly y equals 3 halves x plus 6, but I just want to draw your attention to something. Where these two curves, the line and the curve y equals c root x, where they meet, their slopes are the same. And we have that actually taken care of. Where they meet, the slope of the line, 3 halves, is the same as the slope of the curve, which is the derivative right here. However, there's also something else that we can kind of get from the fact that they meet right there. The x value where they meet, those curves have the same y value. That is, y equals c root x is the same as the y value for 3 halves x plus 6. So in other words, c root x is equal to 3 halves x plus 6. So that'll be actually my second equation. Let me write that down so you can see it. c times the square root of x is equal to 3 halves x plus 6. Now I have one equation here and a second equation there. And they both, both those equations have the same variables, c and x. So I have two equations with two unknowns. And so I can actually solve this. And what I might want to do is maybe solve one for let's say x, and uh, that will allow me to solve the other one for c. So I'll go ahead and do that here. I'll uh, take this guy, this first equation, and um, let's go ahead and solve it for the square root of x. I'm going to multiply both sides by x to the 1 half, which is the same thing as the square root of x, and divide both sides by 3. Okay, so that first equation can be rewritten like that. And what that means is that wherever I see a square root of x in the second equation, I'm going to replace that with a c over 3. And if you look right here, that's not a square root of x, but it's a square root of x being squared. So I get this. c times, instead of a square root of x, I'll call it c over 3, must equal 3 halves times x, which is actually the square root of x squared, so that's going to be a c squared over 9, plus 
6. So this will be my equation I'm going to solve and find my value of C for, because all they really want is the value of C. So let's go ahead and simplify this down. If C squared over 3 is equal to C squared over 3 goes into 9 3 times, times 2 is 6 plus 6. And now I can subtract C squared over 6 from both sides. That'll actually give me, because this is, if you multiply both top and bottom by 2, you get 2C squared over 6. I'm going to subtract the C squared over 6, so I get C squared over 6 is equal to 6. Multiply both sides by 6, I get C squared is equal to 36, and therefore C must equal plus or minus 6. Now, it's a pretty easy logical deduction that it's going to be C equals the positive 6, but you might not know why. So let's go ahead and just experiment or talk about uh, the possibility that C could be negative. If C were negative, that means the graph would look like this. It's the upside down square root function. Well, there's no way the line Y equals 2 thirds X, or I'm sorry, 3 halves X, plus 6, yeah. There's no way that line's going to hit that curve. So I happen to know the negative 6 is not a possibility. It's only the positive 6. So C equals positive 6 is the answer.